Uh, hi, everybody. Um, if you are here, it means that you will like to listen to the three of us talk nonsense for a half an hour. Um, so we might as well get moving. Uh, so the title of this, thank you, Vipple. Uh, the title of this is The Newbie Perspective. I'd like to kind of take credit for the subtitle, which really tells everything about what we're going to be explaining. People who used to use Windows but then discovered Fedora and now like that more and how we got here, not here, here, like this room, but what brought us to using Fedora. So that's going to kind of set the theme for us speaking today. Uh, so yeah, what are we going to talk about and why should you really give a crap? I'm going to do an intro for a couple of minutes. Then, yep, I'm going to kind of waffle on for a few minutes. Then Anton's really going to deliver what everybody wants to hear. Adam's going to talk about gaming, if there's anybody left that's actually listening. And then we're going to do a wrap-up and Q&A session for probably not five minutes, let's be honest. So, who am I? Uh, I became the Red Hat intern for the CPE team all the way back to pre-COVID times, which sounds like eons ago in January 2020. Uh, did that through my final year of uni and then kind of rolled into just being an associate engineer. Uh, kind of slid in through the back door where nobody was watching uh, in June 2021. I'm really, really old, but I'm also really immature. So I don't know, kind of balances out. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Anton Medvedev. I'm really, really young. Uh, I'm on my third year of uh, my bachelor degree, and I'm working at Red Hat since February 2022 as an intern. And uh, I already use Fedora half and year, so I would like to share my experience with it, things you can struggle with, and something like that. Cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, you left me with no choice, but I'm not going to introduce my age here. My name is Adam Piasecki. Uh, I recently uh, finished the HZP in Computer Science in, in, in Ireland, working for the Institute of Technology, joined Red Hat. I was lucky enough to join Red Hat in January 22. And this was more or less the moment when I started to playing with and on Fedora. Cool. OK. Um, so it's my turn now. You are all going to stop and listen to everything that I have to say, uh, which kind of leads me to these screenshots. This is when we were planning this talk. And yeah, again, this is just going to kind of paint the picture of what kind of a person I am. And, how weird I am. Uh, so let's go back. Let's go all the way back. I think if anybody was listening to Matthew Miller's talk about the state of Fedora, he actually mentioned something that I started laughing at because the first image you're going to see is a computer that my dad rocked up with circa like 1988, which is a lovely block of a machine called the Apple II. Um, it came with a manual that was probably bigger than I was at the time. And you could go through and enter code to get uh, a game. You could kind of write your own game, which was basically Snake. And it took an eight-year-old James probably the guts of about two to three weeks to enter all the code. And if you made one mistake, you had to start from scratch. But I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, the next one, if you're from the States, or know somebody from the States and were alive back in the mid nineties, you were basically uh, issued a gateway computer uh, that coincided with the advent of the internet kind of explosion and dial up modems and stuff like that. Uh, and then the next one, I don't know why, but my dad decided to trade in the gateway 2000 for a Dell, which was basically the exact same machine uh that had terrible video terrible audio but yeah he just thought that was a really good decision and then the last one was when i got out of the navy in the early 2000s uh, actually i was still in the navy i was uh pulled into singapore and decided slightly inebriated let's be honest that i'd grab a new compact laptop that probably weighed around 30 pounds came in a briefcase 
and I'm surprised it didn't have like a diesel motor attached to it to get it to run. Uh, but yeah, that was it. Now, you might be asking yourself, come on, who cares? Who cares, James? Yeah, I know, I know. But all of this leads to this point. This is me up until 2017 going, come on, there are other operating systems? What's an operating system? I think I've heard of Linux before, something like that. And the whole thing is, uh, leading up to 2017, I had moved to Ireland in 2013. I had a background, like I said, in the Navy as a carpenter. I was really, really working hard to get a, a, a job and a career in the brewing industry, kind of successfully. And then around August 2016, it all kind of came crashing down with a wife and three kids at home. So I made the great decision to say, you know what? I'm going to go back to school for four years. But I did, and I did it fine. Uh, got my degree in computer forensics and security from a school here in Waterford. Um, and it was really my introduction to other operating systems, the world of Linux distributions. Uh, and it ran parallel to me starting to learn software development uh, in a basic way and uh, heard instructors talk about Ubuntu, didn't really know what that meant. Also, like some stuff with Kali Linux. Again, didn't really know what that, that meant at the time. But as I got better at learning software development, I started to realize that these machines give you much more control. And it really ran parallel. So for the last, I don't know, few years, second year in uni, something like that, I had a dual boot machine with Windows because I was still very much tied to that uh, Windows operating system with an Ubuntu. And then I switched over to Fedora a couple of weeks prior to starting my internship, really just to see what the difference was between Ubuntu and Fedora, and just fell in love with it. And learned a little bit more about software development, learned what it meant to have a Linux machine and be able to uh, really have control over everything that you're doing and why. That was the big kind of kicker for me is knowing that what I'm doing with the machine and what kind of difference it's going to make to the machine and what I'm instead of just pressing uh, different icons and running GUIs and not really understanding what's going on under the hood, that all changed. And I really fell in love with it. And so now I work with the Fedora machine. I also have another dual boot machine uh, that runs um, Ubuntu and some Kali Linux for just research purposes, I guess, just to have some fun with the Kali Linux stuff. So that, that was my journey. That was my journey as a as an older guy coming to the world of Fedora um, late in life, but absolutely enjoying every minute of it. So that's me. Mm, so what about me, huh? Next slide, please. Um, Uh, let me start uh, by telling you a story of my scary past. I was an uh, unusual kid, which went uh, to the school and um, had a family, had a friends. Uh, everything was unusual. Uh, so uh, the, all of my friends uh, were running Windows. All my family members were running Windows because it was comfortable. It was... Uh, uh, all people use it, and uh, people doesn't don't, don't think about uh, Linux uh, in like usual people. So after I finished uh, the school, uh, one friend of mine, which was also as me interested in computer technologies and computer science, uh, advised me to try Linux. Uh, he mm, he explained me uh, he, he explained me uh, some arguments, but uh, it wasn't a good argument it was a, a, a imagination of uh, of a member of human being uh, so um, it, it's it's not really uh, good arguments uh, but i tried to it i installed uh, it was ubuntu i don't remember correctly which version uh, which version it was but uh, after two months i decided to remove it uh, from my computer and why it's uh, basically because i hated it 
I hated the file system. I didn't understand how it works. I hated the terminal because I didn't uh, know any commands to, to use it, to run it. Uh, and uh, next part of my story uh, placed uh, when I started to go, when I started to go to university because there almost all professors uh, that uh, were there on, on their elections uh, were using a Linux. It was different. It were different uh, versions, uh, different distribution of Linux, but uh, uh, pre pretty, pretty much all of professors use it. And there were projects that I, I couldn't resolve without using Linux. So uh, I, I started to choose, uh, I started to think about what distribution should I install and why I, I chose Fedora. It's basically because I read a lot of articles, I saw a lot of videos and uh, Fedora, uh, I using recent or uh, uh, or even a latest version of kernel. It it, it use it using a, a, a RPM package manager that Fedora used for installing for its, for installing packages. You uh, uh, using uh, al almost uh, latest versions of upstream software, uh, and uh, it's pretty modern. And uh, as a young guy, I, I wanted everything modern. So I decided to install Fedora and st started to explore it. And uh, I defined for myself uh, three level of, uh, uh, of diving into it. Next slide, please. And next slide, please. Yeah, so first of all, uh, I was struggling with terminal because uh, I didn't understand how to use this tool. And is this tool, it's uh, pre pretty, pretty much first things uh, you need to know when you uh, when you decide to, to run Linux. Uh, I got some course at my university about uh, basic commands, uh, just renaming, just moving, just creation di directories and stuff like that. But when I started to read about it, when I started to uh, ex exploring uh, how powerful this tool is, I was really surprised because this tool gave you ability to do almost everything in your operation system. You can uh, edit your code in Vim text editor. You, you can uh, move files. You can uh, connect to the servers and uh, do 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 the stuff um, st stuff that uh, all you need. Just literally all. Next slide, please. Next level of uh, my diving was customizing. I started to try customize my Fedora experience. I tried different uh, working environments like KDE, like Gnome. Uh, I, 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 I stayed uh, with Gnome nowadays, but uh, I tried uh, a lot. I tried even a Windows Manager. Uh, it, it was scary, but, uh, but uh, I like that uh, some people m might like it. And um, it's a pretty good thing about Fedora because uh, you can customize your experience whatever you want. You 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 you, you can make your Fedora looks uh, more like v Windows like machines, uh, Windows like operations. You can make Fedora looks more like Mac OS uh, operations, uh, Mac OS. Uh, so you you can customize it. You can customize uh, almost uh, all. Uh, uh, all of designs this uh, uh, on this operation system, and uh, um, I, I, after the, uh, after this, I started to understand um, Fedora deeper. And next slide, please. And main part uh, of using Fedora is that that you can run open source software, and uh, it it gives you a lot. Uh, this software, uh, firstly, uh, safe, very safe because uh, everyone can uh, uh, can see. Uh, a source code of the software. Uh, it uh, perfectly runs on uh, Linux-like machines, especially on Fedora, because Fedora is the best. Uh, and uh, open source may means in, in, in open source that why, uh, while you're using it, you support open source community, which is uh, the best part of, uh, of nowadays, because open source community makes our lives better. The uh, open source community creates new technologies that, that people can share bet between between them. And uh, next slide, please. But recently, uh, I, I did a mistake, uh, a very huge mistake. I, I wanted to play one one game, so I, I installed 
a Windows again. And uh, it seems no, more, uh, no longer comfortable for me because I started to hate it. Uh, they, they, they were no comfortable design. And uh, after two days, I just deleted it uh, completely from my computer. Uh, just because why you need pay, pay any money if you can get best operation system and best distribution for free and just using it. So that's it. Thank you. Great stuff. Thank you. Uh, gaming on VR is something I wanted to talk about because I remember uh, gaming was something that was putting me off to use Linux for quite a long time. Uh, but before I get into it, I would like to explain to you how I got into the Fedora system in the first place. Next slide, please, James. So as you can now see, uh, first, and that was quite a long time ago, I started my computer journey with the Commodore 64 machine. Now, that was a very unique experience as if I wanted to play a game, for example, I had to use my screwdriver in order to set up properly the tape recorder uh, in order to, to sort out the frequency or whatever of the waves uh, with the computer, then load the game. And that was quite an experience. So that was about 1992. Uh, and a couple of years later, maybe around 96, I got uh, the Amiga uh, 500. Uh, with both systems, I couldn't really do too much or I didn't have even resources to learn about doing anything else than gaming. So you can see that I got into computers uh, by playing simply games. A few years later, there was uh, somewhere around 2000, I got my first AMD K6 3D now uh, version 2 333 megahertz processor, which on top of this amazing naming uh, had also the logo of windows on it so you can see we at the time we were kind of forced to use whatever we were provided with and um, in the circumstances that i was growing up with the internet was not that common at the time uh, so i didn't actually have access to it so i didn't know about uh, about anything like linux uh, at the time uh, next slide please uh, so, around 97, as you can see here, uh, I discovered Linux uh, by reading some of the uh, li literature and some of the magazines that were released at the time. Um, I did my uh, share of studying, I had a background in geophysics, decided to move on to finally programming around September 2019, where I started my uh, HDIP uh, in computer science. In the meantime, I got lucky. Uh, somebody said yes when I was bending my knee. Uh, she got pregnant as well. And in this, with this fantastic circumstances, I managed uh, to, to complete the hedge in computer science. That was quite challenging, as you can imagine, little baby and so on. Uh, but same as James, James um, to start using Linux, really. Um, I was convinced only when I started working on software engineering projects. Um, I just found it more useful, more stable, and, and, and much better than Windows for me. Uh, as you can see here, I have the basic tool, which was available on, uh, on Commodore, Amiga OS, Windows, eventually Ubuntu. I had some history with the with a backtrack Linux, but it was more that I would install, for example, a repo, I would run a, like dual boot system on my computer, the Linux system would be always installed, but I would never use it because I didn't really know uh, what to do with it until I discovered Fedora. Can you move on, James, please? Uh, a couple of years ago, when I was installing the Linux systems, uh, I was trying, for example, Ubuntu, and when I was changing graphic cards, I remember how, what kind of pain it was to properly install the graphic drivers um, for the Linux systems, not even mentioning the fact that the games available for the Linux at the time, maybe even six years ago, um, were basically not available. You could, I could play games like Pac-Man, I could play something, uh, something simple like Snake, uh, but I couldn't really find anything that was playable or entertaining for the, for the Linux system right now. Uh, things change so much that uh, with the three lines of code that I presented here on this slide, 
basically NVIDIA graphic card is auto, it's, it's installed uh, and it's ready to go. And that doesn't take more than a couple of minutes. Uh, probably doesn't take uh, much less time and it's any uh, less complicated on a Windows machine. Uh, so it's just something that I, I'd like to share. Can you move on? The gaming is something I always enjoyed. Uh, I still enjoy, I, even though I don't have as much time at the, at the moment. But uh, there is a couple of platforms that provide gaming uh, for both Windows and Linux users. Um, in here, I'm presenting uh, only two. Uh, these seem to be, to me, like the most common ones currently uh, used. And as you can see, the list of games for the Linux system on the left-hand side is quite large and impressive. Now, I'm not saying that all of these titles on this list are available for the Linux gaming, but things are definitely improving, uh, especially with the development of the latest Steam Deck platform. Next slide, please. Here you see another alternative to Steam uh, called Epic Games. Uh, this game is uh, presented only and only for Windows operating system. Now, it's not something I would be interested in. Don't really uh, like lawn mowing simulators. Uh, therefore, I choose to play on Fedora and on Linux. The games seem to be much nicer from my perspective. But then again, uh, here installation of the platform takes literally two lines of code, copied paste into the terminal, and everything works like a dream. Um, I, I think it's a grand alternative, um, and I was actually quite shocked to discover that uh, Epic Games and Steam work perfectly and fluently on Fedora. Next slide, please. Now, that is another problem that I faced over the years of gaming. Um, the card that you can see, uh, the, the card that you cannot see at, at, at the moment, but the image that you see is uh, is um, presented by the use of the GTX 970. This card is about six, seven years old. And about five years ago, I was not able to, to after I, what I thought was appropriate uh, driver installation, receive any uh, significant results if it comes to frames per second on the screen of any sort of game. Um, currently, as you can see, on the very old graphic card, uh, considering the, the, the current graphic card market, uh, I reached uh, a score of nearly 170 frames per second. Now, I'm not saying that this is a stable, but stable uh, on the medium settings with the, the game that is presented is easily above 150 FPS. The same game uh, tested on the Windows machine was not performing as significantly, and it is not uh, only uh, chosen because I'm using no Fedora. This is what I observed across a couple of games that I played with. So simply by using Fedora, by using the Linux-based system uh, on the Steam, for example, platform, the performance that we're getting is much more significant than the performance that we would get uh, playing on the Windows machine. Now, this is only my opinion. This is only my observation. I didn't run any uh, scientific tests on it, but uh, the image speaks for itself. Can I have another slide, please, James? OK. Now, this is a place <laughs> where we wanted to put in something uh, important, and I think we managed. This is a very important quote by somebody. That's about as intelligent as we get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you very much again uh, for everybody tuning in and listening to us for this couple of minutes. If you want to reach out, here's our details. And yeah, that was a good talk. <laughs> um, I think we have one question in the Q&A from Sandro. It says, how do I get my son to embrace the terminal? He's been using Fedora and Pop! OS all his life, but he uses it like a Windows user, point and click. Um, depends. I mean, I would say Anton touched on it first, and then Adam uh, went on to it a bit more. I think the customization is a, is a main thing. Um, and then if he's at all... Yeah, my son. Okay. Uh, if he's at all into games and being able to use some of those uh, commands, those terminal commands to, to get uh, either Steam Deck or Ho Heroic to work properly, you know, that's like the first introduction because once he starts using the terminal really for, for anything to do with any sort of customization, it will grow. You know, it can be something as simple as just running his update code, you know, in the terminal, just to make sure that his system's being updated properly. And then 
figuring out how to install new apps, anything, you know, that's, that would be my recommendation unless the lads have something else. Yeah. I, I, I found myself that like the biggest problem with this is the fear of trying the terminal because it kind of might look scary at the beginning, but I, I noticed that it kind of looks the same way, but instead of mouse click, I would use control C control V. And at the very beginning, what I would do, I would have a list of comments that I use quite frequently. And simply, if I want to do something, I would just copy the comment I want to execute and paste it then in the terminal. That would just simply solve a lot of my problems, if that helps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. my point of view is that you can make try. Uh, for example, name of uh, name of your son is uh, Michael or whatever. For example, you, you, you may learn, uh, Michael, how to use uh, some commands. And after after some meeting where he, when where he, he will be with his, his friends, uh, you, you just uh, would say like um, My, Michael did a really great job in terminal, and his friends uh, 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 will be surprised about it. And uh, he, he maybe uh, will start to, to think that it's cool uh, to use terminal and switch to it. It's my recommendation but it uh, might not work. I think we are, uh, oh wait, do we have another Q&A? Yeah, we do. Uh, in the tips for using NVIDIA on Fedora, it works for me on Lenovo P1 in Wayland, but it's not able to work with two or more external monitors. One external is fine. Okay, I'm not really getting a the question there, but that's a good tip, so that's cool. Um, Okay. Yeah, I think we're out of time. Thanks, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of the nest. See you guys around the social. Yeah, see Hello. you guys. Bye-bye.